Okay. I am Aaron Fox on Twitter as Aaron Fuchs. Looks like a spelling mistake. It's not. Uh, that's where you could find me. And I'm here to talk about learning React Native as a junior engineer. Um, I got hired at Major League Soccer to build a brand new React Native app straight from the start. So um, I didn't know much about React Native, so obviously the first thing that I Googled was, what is soccer? Um, <laughs> I'm not a big soccer fan, so I, I remember when I interviewed, they asked me, they're like, are you here for the soccer or are you here for the tech? And I was like, I Googled what is soccer before I came to this interview, so I'm definitely here for the tech. Um, but I love this gift because it's a lot like how I felt. I had no idea about React Native, I had no idea about being a software engineer, and I, didn't, I just didn't know much about much. So I could go on and on about being a junior engineer, but for the sake of this 10 minutes, um, I just kind of cherry-picked a couple lessons that I've learned and what my team has done to really have successful first-timers learning React Native. So these are my five lessons of learning React Native. The first one, jumping in head first, um, it's terrifying, it's so scary. Being a first-time junior, I have so many questions, and we're about to build a brand new app for millions of soccer fans around the world. Um, I don't know, I didn't know that a game is called a match, or I'm not sure what the difference between props and state is. So jumping in head first is number one. Number two, uh, walk before running. So we used a lot of technologies kind of as a booster seat for us. Um, I'll get more into that later. So we started out small and got a little bigger with that. Um, three, writing checks to your API can cache. So understanding APIs and where it comes from, it's like magic at first. You're like, wow, there's so much information here. Like, where is it coming from? Um, so it's something that juniors have no much data about or information about. And four, best way to learn is to teach. Obviously, um, I love this one because it's not just a valuable lesson for juniors, but people that work with juniors, teach juniors, mentor juniors. And the last one is stop, drop, and learn. And uh, this is just kind of an environment that we started doing at MLS, and I'll get more into that in a bit. But we're going to go ahead and jump right into the first one. Um, here's a couple of screenshots of our app that we were using or created. And I remember when they first gave us the Zeppelin slides, I was like, oh my gosh, like there's no way I can even get that MLS shield up there. Um, I just had so many questions of like, where's this information coming from? And what does two and two mean? And how can you play a soccer game and nobody wins? Um, so uh, there's just a lot of questions like that running through my head. Um, but usually juniors are too scared to ask questions. They think you're really busy or they just have a million questions they don't want to ask too, too many. So um, just always know that we always have questions and you guys probably know the answer. You might not know the answer, but when you explain it to us, you might understand it more and we'll get it more. So it's just overall many questions going on. So obviously you might have noticed some of these components that Sam brought up earlier. So we had to really start small. And so the way that we did that was with Storybook. And Storybook was awesome. Um, so coming in to MLS, I only had about a week of React experience. So I didn't know much about how to build components or anything like that. So Storybook really gave me confidence to like, pump out these components that we're building for our new app. Um, it's total in isolation. Uh, it gave me confidence. I didn't have to get Xcode or Android Studio up and running. So it really, again, confidence booster. Um, I think my first two to three months, I just built components in Storybook. So. This is my very first component, it's a button. And um, I had no idea how much goes into a button. Um, you can see here we have the props coming in, the fill color, the, the size, the on press. Um, this is the way we laid it out. But Storybook, it's just, it really gets rid of a lot of the noise. Um, and for first timers and for juniors, it's just great to have this one button, this one component that I'm working on. So highly recommend it if, it's, if you have juniors on your team or you're starting out with React, React Native. Um, another way that we really got rid of the noise was using GraphQL. How many use GraphQL here? We got some class, great. Um, I love GraphQL, because when I first started out, I was like, oh, these queries are awesome. Like, that's all it is. Like, it just magically is appearing. Um, so that's what I thought, thought it was. I was just magically making these queries, and they would show up. Um, but it's not only just a very popular way of getting data for your app now, um, it's excellent for us to work with because I didn't know much about the APIs that we have and I didn't have to learn everything in the APIs. I was just able to do option space and then all my 
options were available for me. So GraphQL is really great for discovering what data you have available and kind of a learn on your own aspect of it. Again, the command space really, really saved me to be able to see what was available and then I was able to add it to copy and paste it in our app. Um, here's an example of our simple match query. Um, I love GraphQL because the documentation has a little bonus is written for you. So really awesome to be able to just figure out what information I could have for a match tile, for a component while I'm building it out in Storybook. And it really gives you a lot of confidence that you can get all this information back for you. And then you just copy it and paste it and you know it's going to work. Um, this is graphical what we're using. We use it probably every day at MLS. And it's just a really great tool that we use for everyone uses it from seniors leads to juniors. So really, really awesome. Uh, next part of this is so I didn't do this all on my own. They weren't just, OK, here's Storybook, here's GraphQL, you're doing great. Um, we did a ton of pair programming. And I'm a huge, huge fan of pair programming. Um, we would pair junior, 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 senior, senior, senior. It was just great to have a buddy next to you to be able to ask questions or just see how they write their syntax. So pair programming is something that we did for first three months every day. Or it was, we still do it now with more complex things. But if you ever have the opportunity to pair program with anyone about anything, I highly recommend it. And I'm just a very, very big fan of it. Um, so sometimes we would pair program and it get just kind of get a little crazy, you know, when you're pair coding and you just don't understand exactly what's going on and it just gets a little more complex. So then we would just be like, whoa, 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 we need to have a teachable moment. And last night at the speaker dinner, someone was telling me that a teachable moment is a bad thing. They're like, oh, you really messed that up. We need to have a teachable moment about that. Um, but at MLS, we see teachable moment as a way to stop what we're doing, drop our laptops and really figure out what your issue is going on and figure out what, um, what you don't understand. So we would huddle in a conference room, have a whiteboard. Juniors are able to ask any questions that we had. So it's great to have that safe space to be able to ask questions or like say, well, I thought we did it this way. Or like, I thought props and state were the same thing. Um, but it was great to be able to have that environment to ask those questions and have different levels of, people, of members from the team there um, to answer them. So the first example I have here is, I always thought React Native was just like one app that you just made and everybody could use it and everybody could have it and you could build anything you wanted on it. Um, but we have a Bright Cove media player for um, Major League Soccer and it, the bridges, like I had no idea about bridges. Um, so one of our teachable moments was learning about that. Um, it could be anywhere from 10 seconds to 10 minutes. It's just a really, really quick little teachable moment. Um, another one was GraphQL. So with our architecture and our infrastructure, I just like, where is GraphQL in this? Like, is it in the database or is it in here? And this is when we were at, uh, at lunch. And all of a sudden, we like moved everything on the table. And the ketchup packets became our APIs. And the mason jars are our databases. And our happy server was a silverware. And I just got it. I really got it. Um, so it's just interesting to see, to have these teachable moments like in, out of the office, um, at lunch. So it was just awesome to be able to have that um, experience and that, just that kind of team to um, ask questions when you're starting out uh, with React Native. So kind of to wrap it all up, um, the technologies that we use, there's so many out there that are really benefit for juniors or first timers like React Native, Storybook, um, pair programming, and um, teachable moments. There's a lot of information out there that can really help your entire team, not just juniors, but seniors and teach to learn and everything like that. So in the end, like you might be very, very confused, um, whether it's about soccer or whether you're just starting out as a software engineer trying to learn React Native. But eventually, like you start getting it, and you're like, this is awesome. Like React Native is actually very, very cool. And then you celebrate, because maybe you're not a junior anymore, and you actually understand it. That's all I got for you guys.